Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2022. If you do not own this book already, 2020 I meant to say. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure the book is in front of you, otherwise you will have difficulty following the work. We are right now on page number 1130. We'll begin with problem number 20, the very first problem there. Problem number 20 is asking us for the swim that took that took 34 minutes the actual heart rate was less than the predicted one by how much the actual heart rate was less than the predicted one by how much and they give us a graph here and the graph looks something like this and of course you have the book in front of you you can follow the graph over there I have to produce something here to do the problem there's not much in it but we still need the graph here so it looks something like this goes all, all the way down to 37 this we don't we don't care what this is and this is 150 right here and it turns out that the predicted one is right here for 34 34, 35, 36 and 37 so for the swim that took him 34 minutes which is this right here if you go up this is this is this actual heart rate the predicted heart rate was 150 actual heart rate turns out is 148 if you look at the graph carefully that's all it is the answer is 2 the question is for the swim that took 34 minutes the actual heart rate was less than the predicted one by how much it was it, it was the actual actual one which is 148 was less than the predicted one by 2 heartbeat the answer is B all of that for that simple thing let's do the next one shall we that was number 20 Number 21. Number 21 says which one will yield exponential growth. So we'll be presented with four different scenarios where we're going to have some money in the in the bank. It is going to grow over time and our job is to figure out of the four scenarios that are presented to us which one will give us exponential growth. Let's take a look at the first one. The first one says each year, each year add 2% of the initial amount. They don't give you an initial amount, they say we have some money in the account. In the account in the bank to start out with we're just going to make up we're going to make up some more let's make up 100 dollars so here's the year 0 1 2 3 and so forth and here is the dollar amount that we can have let's pretend that we have 100 dollars that we deposited in the bank at the beginning of the year year 0 100 dollars what happens each year it says that each year we have to add 2 percent of the initial amount that's very important of the initial amount that's all 2% of the initial amount, we are assuming the initial amount was 100, we just keep adding 2%. Next year it becomes 102. The following year again we add 2% of this amount, the initial amount. That's very important, which is why I put a capital account. So 2% of 100 again is 2, 104, 106, and so on and so forth. It's a linear equation, or rather it's a linear growth. It's a linear growth, it grows by the constant amount of $2 every year. That is not exponential. This is linear. Answer choice A is wrong. 
let's look at answer choice B. Answer choice B says each year we add instead of instead of two percent we add one and a half percent. Again, one and a half percent of the initial amount plus one hundred. That's all. Plus a plus another hundred dollars. But it's not going to change the fact that because we are always adding a fixed percentage of the initial amount, which is one hundred dollars, we are assuming this is this one is also going to be linear. For example, if we start with one hundred dollars, one and a half percent of one hundred dollars is dollar fifty, dollar fifty, and we add another one hundred dollars every year. So two hundred dollars, two hundred and one dollars, two hundred and one dollars and fifty cents. Following year, it's going to be three hundred dollars, and then we add another dollar fifty of one hundred one hundred dollars, one one and a half percent of one hundred initial amount, one and a half percent of one hundred is dollar fifty again. We had two dollars, two dollars and one, two hundred and one dollars and fifty cents already. Now it's going to be three hundred dollars. The next year again is going to be four hundred, and then dollar fifty three plus one dollar fifty is four fifty, and so on and so forth. As you can see, each year it goes up, goes up again by constant amount. It goes up, it goes up by constant amount. This is also a linear relationship. It goes up every year by one hundred, one hundred, and one dollars and fifty cents every year. Let's look at answer choice C. Answer choice, rather, let's look at answer choice D. That pretty much gives it a guess to what the answer is going to be. This answer choice D says each year we add, each year we add, simply each year we add one hundred dollars. But that's just silly. Each year, if we just add one hundred dollars, and if we start with a hundred dollars, the next year, at the end of first year, it becomes two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars, and so on and so forth. Again, it goes up by constant amount. This is also linear. The correct answer, of course, is C. The correct answer is C. In C, it says each year we add. Each year we add. 1% of current value. There you go, 1% of current value. So here's our year 0, 1, 2, 3. And if we start, this is a dollar amount. If we start with D dollars, if we start with D dollars, we add 1% to it, it becomes 1.01 .01 times D. What about second year? I shouldn't have put it so close. What about second year? In second year, it's go we're going to add 1% of this amount. 1% of this amount is going to be 1.01 .01 times this amount, which is 1.01 .01 D. It becomes 1.01 .01 squared times D. This is year two. Similarly, year three, it's going to be 1.01 .01 raised to 3. At the end of the nth year, it's just going to be 1.01 .01 raised to n at the end of nth year. As you can see, this is exponential growth. It is exponential growth because it is not growing as a constant amount. It's not linear. The answer is C. Number 22. Number 22. Number 22 it says the sum of three numbers, sum of three numbers equals 855. We are further told that one of those three numbers. One number they're calling it x happens to be 50% more than the sum of the other two. The question simply is, what is that x? 
So we have three numbers. One of those numbers we are calling it x and that x happens to be such that it is equal to it is equal to it is more 50 percent more than the sum of the other two. It is 50 percent more than the sum of the other two. So for example if you have one number let's call it a, second number let's call it b, the third one is 50 percent more than sum of this amount. Sum of this amount is a plus b and it is 50% more than that, which means it is 1.5. 1.5 times a plus b. Let's put this a plus b in the parenthesis separately. There we go. And this is our x. And we are told that the sum is equal to 855. There we go. All we have to do is solve this equation so that we can figure out the x. We want to find out this value. Let's do that, shall we? We're going to do that by substitution. Let's do that by substitution. Let a plus b equal s. s for the sum. s for the sum. a plus b. So if you do that, a plus b is s plus 1.5 times a plus b, which is another sum. And that has to equal 855. We're going to continue this equation on the top. This equation right here, we continue on the top. S plus 1.5 S is just going to be 2.5 S has to equal 855. Now I don't know about you, I don't know about you, but I don't like this 0.5 business. I don't like dealing with decimals. It's, it's annoying. It's annoying. It's irritating. Let's get rid of, let's get rid of this decimal by multiplying both sides by 10. So that we can get rid of decimal. 10 times 2.5 is just 25. So we have 25s equals 855 times 10. And now we don't need any of this thing, so I'm going to erase all of this. Let's divide both sides by 5. Let's divide both sides by 5. If we divide both sides by 5, 25 divided by 5 is 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2. Let's divide both sides by 5 one more time. 5 is going to drop out. 8 has 1 5. After we take away 5 from the 8, we have a remainder of 3. What happens to that 3? That 3 goes and joins this 5 and becomes a 35. And 35 is made up of 7 5s. And this, so this 5 goes away now. And then this 5 has 1 5. So it's 171 times 2. And that is our S. S is equal to 171 times 2. 171 times 2 is just going to be 100 times 170 times 2 would have been 340, so it's 342. And how much are how much is our x? If s is there, then therefore, therefore, x must equal to 342 plus plus 50 percent of this amount. 50% of that amount is half of that amount. Half of that amount is this. Because we, how did we get this amount? We got it by multiplying by 2. If this amount times 2 is this amount, then half of that must be this, which is 50%. So this is the sum. This is the sum of the two numbers. The S, that's, this represents A plus B, and this represents 50% of A plus B x equals to sum of, x is 50% more than the sum of the numbers. You get the idea. I make it too much fuss. So it's 3, 4 plus 7 is 11, 1, carry 1. Looks like the answer is 513. The answer is 513. Answer is B. That was 22. That was 22. Let's look at 23, shall we? Let's look at 23, or better yet, or better yet, if you excuse me just for about 10 seconds, I'll be right back.
I made a nice cup of tea for myself and I left it outside the room. Number, number 23. In number 23 we are given two triangles. This is 8 degrees. And then we are given something like this. Which is B degrees. And we are further told, we are further told that the picture is not drawn to scale. Picture is not drawn to scale. If only I can spell scale. Which is very important to keep in mind. Picture is not drawn to scale. We are further told that sine of A sine of A degree is equal to cosine of B degrees. And and we are told that A equals to 4K minus 22 and B equals to 6K minus 13. The question simply is what is the value of K based, based on this, this bits of information. So one more time we are given two triangles. This is angle A, this is angle B. We are told that they are both acute triangle. I left that out. They tell you somewhere in the problem. Let me see where they tell you. Angle A and B show an acute triangle. These are both acute triangles. Acute angles rather. These are both acute angles. And why do they say that to us? Because they, they go through the trouble of telling us that these are not drawn to scale. So if they are not drawn to scale, if you just show me these two angles, I can't really tell. This could be 120 degrees, this could be 170 degrees. Because it's not drawn to scale. It is not drawn to scale, but because they tell you that they are acute angles, we do know that both of these angles are less than 90. Do you understand? Enough, enough of the talk, let's begin. So we are, we are given these two pictures, we are further told the sine of A, A, A degrees is same as cosine of B degrees. We are told that A is equal to 4K minus 22, B is equal to 6K minus 13. Question to please, what's the value of K? What's the value of K? Let's begin. Here's the solution. Let's begin. Let's first look at a very simple a very simple 345 triangle. The simplest in its simplest form, which is simply 345. Let's take a look at it. I need the room obviously, so we need to get all rid of all of this thing. I don't want to erase that. So here's our 345 triangle. The shortest side is 3, this side is 4, this side is 5, this is the right angle. And watch what happens. Let's call this thing, let's call this, let's call this angle A and let's call this angle B. Okay, let's, let's see what happens. In this triangle, as you can see, this is A. Therefore, sine of A, sine of A degrees, is going to be sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Now let's look at cosine of B degrees. B degrees is this one. Cosine of B degrees is cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. This is B, adjacent is this one, 4 over 5. As you can see, sine of A is equal to cosine of B. What do we conclude? What do we conclude from here? What we conclude is that if what we conclude here is that if sine if we are told that the sine of a degrees is same as is equal to cosine of b degrees, then this must mean this must it must mean that a and b are complementary angles. It must mean that A and B are complementary angles. You can clearly see they are. In other words, A plus B, A plus B must equal 90. A plus B equals 90. This is 90. 90 plus 90 is 100. 
that's all it is. That's what we gather from it. When they tell us that the sine of A is equal to cosine of B, what they're telling us in a very roundabout way is that A plus B equals 30. What they're telling us in a very roundabout way is that A plus B, A and B are complementary angles. That's all it is. We have A, we have B, and we know that sum is 90. We know what A equals to in terms of K. We know what B equals to in terms of K. Just substitute and solve it. We need the room. Now I'm going to erase all of this thing. We don't need it. So we are told, so let's pick up from here. We're going to pick up, we're, we're going to pick up the story from here. So A plus B equals 90. But A we are told is equal to 4K minus 22. And B we are told is 6K minus 13. And therefore it must equal, this thing must equal 90. Do you understand? Let me erase this arrow so I can give you proper demarcation. We'll get to that in a second. That's it. 4k plus 6k is 10k. Let's bring the 22 to this side. Let's bring the 13 to that side. So 4k. 4k plus 6k is 10k. On that side we have 90. When we bring this negative 20 22 to this side it becomes positive 22. When we bring the 13 to that side it becomes positive 13. 2 plus 3 is 5. 1 plus 9 is 10, 10 plus 2 is 12, there you go. It's 125, it looks like 10K equals 125, therefore K must be 12.5, voila. K must be 12.5. And that is answer choice C. That is answer choice C. A very long story, but of course eventually it had to end. Number 24. Oh, we never learned about D market. I just, I just, I just raised it. Let's see if I can quickly find it. I know we learned it. Oh, there we go. Day number 12. interested very quickly if you're interested in improving your vocabulary and I'm sure you are because that's how we get a uh, decent score in the verbal part in the verbal part you must work on your vocabulary for the reading portion and you must work on having a better grasp of the grammar English grammar for the writing part that's what it is if you if you're interested in improving your vocabulary just type in SAT vocabulary words just search for SAT vocabulary words day number 12 you will watch the video and you will learn the word demarcate. The noun is demarcation. Demarcation is the boundary. To demarcate something is to put a boundary around it, to put a border around it. Hence, let's put a demarcation. Let's demarcate. Number 24. In number 24 we are told that when, when each student gets three candies we have I need I need to raise this thing when each student gets three candy we find that we have five left over if on the other hand each student is given four candies. If we try to give four candies to each student, we find that we are twenty-one candies short. We need twenty-one more candies. The question is, what's the number of students? Number of students. Let's call it n. Is what? It's a very simple equation, very straightforward, very simple equation. 
If each student gets three candies and there are n students, if there are n students in the class and each of them gets three candies, that's three times n. And what we find is that we have five left over. So we give each student three candies, there are n students, we give each of them a three and we still have five left over. On the other hand, if we try to give four to each student, if we try to give four to each student, we get 21 short. In other words, we need we need to have 21 more candies. If we had 21 more candies, then each student would have, been, would have been able to get 4 candies. Which means these two quantities are equal. Just solve for n. That's all it is. Subtract 3n from both sides. If we subtract 3n from 4n, we get n. So we're bringing 3n to this side and 21 to this side. 21 plus 5 is 26. That's all it is. Bunch of nonsense about nothing. The reason why sometimes, listen very carefully, okay? This is a little sermon. The reason why sometimes the problem on the exams seem overwhelming, seem, that's the key word. They're not overwhelming, they seem overwhelming, is because of the way they are written, the language. It is done on purpose. It is done by design. So now, after having given candies to, candies, I'm, I need both my hands to say candies, after having given candies to all the students, now I'm going to read the question. Now I'm going to read the question. Verbatim. I'm going to read the questions verbatim. I'm going to read it word for word. I'm going to read the question as it appears in the exam because the question as it appears in the exam makes no mention of candies. So when you read the problem, make up your own problem. Make up a simple language that, that makes you happy. So I'm going to read the way the bloody thing is written. It says, Mr. Cole has a beaker containing n milliliters of solution to distribute to students in the chemistry class. If he gives each student three milliliters of solution, he will have five milliliters left over. If on the other hand, he tries to give each student four milliliters of solutions, he finds that he's 21 milliliters short. Let's screw milliliters, okay? Just use candies. I prefer that. If you wish to get hold of me, if you like to work with me, if you wish me to get help you get ready for the exam, I can help you with the math portion, I can help you with the vocabulary portion, and I can most certainly help you with the grammar portion to help you get a better score in the writing part. Go to my website at keshwaniprev.com, send me an email, and we'll talk some more. Okay? Bye now. Oh, not, let's not do bye, let's learn the word verbatim. Well, I know we learned it, obviously. Give me a break. One second and I'll tell you exactly where it was. Oh, there you go. Day number 73. Day 73. Again, the same idea. Just type in, just type in SAT vocabulary words. Day number 73. The video will pop up. You will learn this word and you will learn many more words that will help you improve your vocabulary. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.